Hey everyone, welcome back to the Reinforcement Learning Series. Today we're talking about a cornerstone concept in reinforcement learning, Markov Decision Processes, or MDPs. This is the foundation that allows agents to interact with their environment, learn, and maximize their rewards. But before we get started, if you haven't watched the first part of this series, where we introduce the basics of reinforcement learning, I highly recommend you check it out first. It'll give you the foundation you need to fully understand today's topic. You can find the link in the description or in the cards above. All right, let's break this down step by step. So by the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of how Markov decision processes work. Let's dive in. All right, picture this. You're an agent and you're in some kind of environment. Maybe it's a maze, maybe it's a video game, or maybe it's the real world. At every step, you take an action, like moving left, picking up an object, or pressing a button. When you do, the environment responds. It changes in some way. Maybe you move to a new location, and it gives you feedback in the form of a reward. For example, if you're solving a maze, you might get a reward for moving closer to the goal or a penalty for hitting a wall. What's your goal? Simple. You want to maximize your total rewards over time. And here's the thing. Reinforcement learning is all about solving this problem. How to act in a way that gets the best results. To solve this problem mathematically, we use the Markov Decision Process Framework, or MDP. This framework helps us represent everything the agent needs to know about the environment. In fact, most reinforcement learning problems can be modeled as Markov Decision Processes. Once we have this structure, we can start finding strategies that work best for the agent. Markov decision processes are defined by four key components. Let's go through them. States. This represents the current situation the agent is in. For example, in a maze, a state might be your current location. Actions. These are the possible choices the agent can make at each state. In the maze, this could be moving up, down, left, or right. Transition probabilities. This tells us the probability of moving from one state to another after taking a specific action. It's written like this. What this means is, if you're in state S and you take action A, what's the probability you'll end up in state S? Rewards. This is the feedback the agent gets after taking an action, like earning points or losing health. These four elements define how the agent interacts with its world. Now the agent's goal is to maximize its cumulative rewards. But how do we represent this mathematically? For tasks that have a clear end, called episodic tasks, we calculate the expected return like this. But what if there's no end? Imagine a robot vacuum that cleans continuously. It doesn't have a final goal. For these continuing tasks, we tweak the formula using something called a discount factor. The discount factor is a number between zero and one. It helps the agent focus more on immediate rewards rather than far off rewards. So the formula becomes like this. This makes the agent prioritize actions that bring benefits sooner rather than later. Now let's talk about policy, which is basically the agent's strategy. A policy maps each state to a probability distribution over actions. In simpler terms, a policy tells the agent what to do in any given state. For example, if the agent is in state S, the policy will decide which action is best, or at least which action has the highest probability of success. The agent's job is to improve its policy over time so that it can make better decisions and maximize rewards. Here's where it gets interesting. Value functions. These are tools that help the agent evaluate how good a state or action is. There are two main types, state value function. This tells us how valuable a state is when the agent follows a specific policy. It's like saying, how good is it to be here? Action value function. This tells us how valuable a specific action is from a state. It's like saying, how good is it to do this here? The action value function is often called the Q function, where Q stands for quality. These functions are like the building blocks that help the agent evaluate its decisions and guide its learning process. The state value function evaluates how good it is for the agent to be in a specific state given that it is following a particular policy. Think of it like this. The agent starts at state S. It follows its policy from that point onward. The state value function tells the agent the expected return or total reward it can achieve starting from S. 
Mathematically, we represent it as like this. In short, this gives us the value of a state under a specific policy. Now, let's take this one step further. The action value function evaluates how good it is for the agent to take a specific action A from state S, given that it will follow a particular policy afterward. Think of it like this. The agent is in state S and decides to take action A. After taking that action, the agent follows its policy. The action value function tells the agent the expected return or total reward starting from S, taking action A and following policy. Mathematically, it's represented as like this. Now that we understand how the agent evaluates states and actions using these value functions, imagine you're playing a strategy game and your goal is to make the best possible moves to win. The optimal policy is like having the ultimate cheat sheet. It tells the agent the best possible action to take in every possible situation to maximize its rewards over time. When we have multiple policies, we need a way to decide which one is better. To do this, we look at the expected return. That's the cumulative reward the agent expects to get by following the policy from any given state. Here's the key. Policy is considered better than or equal to another policy if, for every possible state S, the expected return under policy is greater than or equal to the expected return under another policy. Mathematically, we write this as like this. Now, an optimal policy is closely tied to two key functions. Optimal state value function. This represents the best possible value, expected return for each state, assuming the agent always follows the optimal policy. Optimal action value function. This represents the best possible value expected return for taking a specific action from a given state, again assuming the agent follows the optimal policy afterward. In essence, the optimal policy tells the agent exactly what to do in every situation to achieve the best outcome. To wrap things up, the Markov decision process is a powerful tool that lays the foundation for solving reinforcement learning problems. It helps us define states, actions, rewards, and strategies, enabling agents to learn and improve over time. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to SmartSlides, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions. See you in the next video.